Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and today we are getting some very exciting reports that Apple is indeed working on a refreshed 23-inch iMac and a brand new lower cost 11 inch iPad, not an 11 inch iPad Pro. This would be an addition to the iPad lineup and probably replace the iPad Air. Now both 9to5Mac and Mac rumors are reporting that this information is coming out of the China Times. So for this video, let's go over what we can expect for both of these products, a brand new 23 inch iMac and what sort of updates we might expect from it, and also the brand new 11 inch iPad and what updates we can expect from that. And then also for both products, I'll just throw in some stuff that I would want to see added to it that I think are realistic expectations. Let's start with the iMac because for me, this is the media refresh. Obviously the first thing we can take away from this report is a bigger screen size on the lower end model. Right now, the lower end iMac has a 21.5 inch display. Now one would assume that this 23 inch display could be achieved by just reducing the current bezel size, much like Apple has been doing with a lot of their product lines lately. And if you currently cut out some of the space on the black borders on the current 21.5 inch iMac, it definitely looks like you can fit about a 23 inch screen size if you were to eliminate some of those bigger bezels. I would assume based on this reporting, if the smaller iMac is getting an upgrade and getting a bigger screen size, I would also assume the same is going to be true for the 27 inch model. Now the natural conclusion after reading these reports is that Apple will follow the same strategy for the bigger iMac by reducing the black bezels and including more screen real estate. And again, if you were to measure that outright with the current 27 inch design and eliminate it most of those black borders, you would get a screen size of around 30 inches. Conversely though, that isn't the only other option. We could see Apple follow a very similar strategy to when they updated the 11 inch iPad Pro and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So the 11 inch iPad Pro got a bigger screen moving from 10.5 inches, but the 12.9 inch iPad Pro stayed the same screen size, but reduced the physical footprint. Now, if I had to choose which one I would prefer, put me in the camp of getting the same physical footprint on the 27 inch model, but being upgraded to a bigger 30 inch display, but anything is possible. Apple could choose to reduce that physical footprint and then give us the same 27 inch display. There's also some rumblings that this iMac might be getting a mini LED display. Ming-Chi Kuo first reported that Apple was working on an update to the iMac Pro and other Apple products that would be getting this mini LED display technology. A mini LED display would allow local contrast dimming zones where the iMac could turn off certain portions of the mini LED backlight for more precision over the current LED models. This would lead not only to benefits like increased contrast ratios, but also for proper viewing of HDR content. Currently, the 2019 5K iMac displays do support the P3 wide color gamut, but there is no support for full HDR video. Some recent supply chain reports are saying that Apple may be facing some mini LED display shortages. One of the things that Apple loves to tout whenever they have a new iMac design is of course their displays. And when they introduced the Retina 5K display, that was a big breakthrough, but we've been using that Retina 5K display for a while now, and it's even still at like 500 nits of brightness. So I think if Apple is to introduce a redesign, they're also going to want to push that mini LED display at the same time, and that would be a nice upgrade, not only to get a better display, but also for content creators like myself who would want to work with HDR video. You could get an iMac that could output HDR, and that's actually pretty compelling especially if they can keep it at the same price point. Now, other than a reduction in bezels, we don't know what this design will look like. Personally, I'd love to see them borrow a similar design to how the current Pro Display XDR looks. And although I wouldn't want an optional $1,000 Pro stand, the Pro stand is a lot better than the current iMac stand and offers a lot more adjustments. If I had my way, I would love to see a monitor stand that had a lot more adjustability. Something like the iMac G4 immediately comes to mind, but I would settle for a stand that was just height adjustable at this point. Another thing I think will happen on this iMac redesign is an elimination of the physical spinning hard disks. Listen, in 2020, there is 
zero reason to be selling any computer with a physical spinning hard drive. And if you have a modern iMac with a physical spinning hard drive, I can guarantee you that is the biggest bottleneck in your system and that is what is making your iMac feel painfully slow. So I think we can expect Apple to introduce an all flash storage architecture like they did on the iMac Pro and also include the T2 chip, finally bringing this 2020 iMac in line with the rest of Apple's desktops and laptops. Now by far the biggest question for me about this 2020 iMac and possibly for all Macs in the future, is what chip will this use? Will Apple stick with Intel? Or will they forge a new path ahead with AMD processors? AMD has been just dominating on the processor front lately, offering insanely better performance to cost ratios. Apple already uses AMD GPUs, so moving over to their processors might make sense. And we've also seen AMD processors discovered in Mac OS 10.15.4 beta code, so Apple is definitely testing these processors internally. However, there is also a third option, and I'm sure you've heard about it on this channel plenty of times. There have been rumors going back years now that 2020 will be the year that Apple starts transitioning away from Intel, not even to AMD, but to their own custom ARM-based A-series chips, the same ones that they use inside of devices like the iPhone and iPad. And while I would expect a MacBook to be the prime target for the ARM transition, John Prosser even told us on an episode of GadgetCast, link in the description, that Apple should have ARM Macs running by WWDC this year. So there's always the possibility that Apple has some higher end chips that we don't exactly know about that could fit inside of the iMac. And if Apple is planning an ARM transition eventually on all of their product lineups, not just the MacBooks, maybe they'll just rip the Band-Aid off in 2020, surprise us all with this super, super powerful processor that's ready for their desktop line, and that could be really compelling, especially just how much power they could get out of an ARM processor that doesn't have the thermal constraints of an iPhone and an iPad. That iMac could potentially be super powerful. Now, although the processors are a huge open question, I think we can safely assume that Apple will continue to stick with AMD GPUs. And I think for this 2020 iMac, we will see upgrades to the recent line of AMD GPUs on their seven nanometer process. I also expect price points to remain pretty similar, so I would expect $1,300 for this 23 inch model, and then I would expect around $1,800 for this 27 or 30 inch model. The release date, according to the China Times, is in quarter four of 2020, so that's at the end of the year, but these are set to go into production in quarter three. Now don't forget, we still have one other product to talk about in this video, and that is the brand new 11 inch iPad. For the design, I think we can expect this to be very, very similar to the current 11 inch iPad Pro. And I think it will even include things like a back connecting smart connector to allow connection into new accessories like the $300 Magic Keyboard that just launched. And I think we will also get support for the second generation magnetic Apple Pencil. However, even though this will look similar to that 11 inch iPad Pro, don't expect this to offer every feature the current 11 inch model offers. Expect cuts in areas like the speakers, the current iPad Air only has two of those. Expect this iPad to come with a lightning port rather than a USB-C port that we find on the Pro models. Another cost cutting measure according to this report is that this 11 inch iPad will not have a face ID sensor opting instead for an in-display touch ID fingerprint reader. Now I would take that last report with a bit of a grain of salt as I don't expect Apple to put in in-display touch ID sensors onto these iPads. I would expect Apple to expand face ID even more across the lineup. Now, where we could expect more cost-cutting measures is that Apple will probably not include other expensive technology, like the brand new camera system with LiDAR sensor. And while there are rumors that this iPad will eventually get a mini LED display, I would also think that's a few years out, as I would expect the iPad Pro to receive a mini LED display update 
first. Probably one of the biggest differences between this 11 inch iPad and the 11 inch iPad Pro model will be the chip. So I would expect that when this iPad is updated, it will probably be getting an A13 chip while the next iPad Pro that is rumored to be coming will probably have an A14X processor. Now what this report says is that this iPad is going to be a lower cost model. Now what I don't think that means is don't expect this iPad that we're talking about here, this 11 inch iPad, to replace the budget option at $329. I would expect this 11 inch iPad to replace the current iPad Air and I think we could expect a very similar price point of around $500 to maybe $600. And we're looking at a very similar time frame for this new iPad as to this new 23 inch iMac, so I would expect it at the end of the year. But anyway, that's all the information and what I expect will be in the brand new 23 inch iMac and the brand new 11 inch iPad. Please let me know in the comments below what features would you like to be see added to both of these products and which one are you looking forward to more? A brand new 23 inch or 30 inch iMac or a update to the iPad Air to make it an 11 inch iPad. Also, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna support the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.